My father, John Franklin Nathan, was one of the only black pharmacists in the city of Columbus in the 1970s and 1980s, and man, was my daddy special. I know this because I had a front row seat to his practice. He was compassionate, empathetic, and committed to the work of our community. I watched my dad explain to patients how medications work long before this was required by law. He knew the nicknames and birthdays of a lot of his regular customers and literally watched a community of children grow up right before his very eyes. He was a gatekeeper of health and wellness in our community and my biggest inspiration in becoming a pharmacist. My journey in the profession started at Spelman College where I majored in biology. I then moved cross country to attend the University of California, San Francisco for pharmacy school. And let me be honest with you that I struggled in pharmacy school. As one of the only black women in my cohort, and I struggled trying to find my sense of identity and purpose in this profession. But then something very unique happened. My fourth year of pharmacy school, on a clinical rotation, I was introduced to my very first patient, and I will never forget her. For the purposes of our discussion today, let's call her Shuri. Shuri was young, black, popular on IG, and came from a very loving family. But unlike me, Shuri was very sick. She was experiencing night sweats and chills, skin rash, and Shuri was, had been recently diagnosed with HIV. I explained to Shuri that day that HIV stands for the human immuno deficiency virus, and that once infected, the body's immune system, the germ-fighting system, does not fight off infections properly if left untreated. During that patient interaction that day with Shuri, she shared with me that she was not in a monogamous relationship. She used condoms, but not consistently and she had a sexually transmitted infection within the last six months. And these three behavioral markers would have indicated Shuri for HIV prevention, and specifically a drug that I wanna to talk to you about today called PrEP. PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. Pre meaning before, Exposure meaning coming in contact with HIV, and prophylaxis meaning treatment to prevent an infection. Simply put, PrEP is a medication that you can take every day to prevent acquiring HIV through sexual transmission. It's kind of like putting on a mask to prevent COVID-19. But as a pharmacist, I rarely dispense bottles of PrEP from my hands into the black and brown hands of the people who need it the most. And Shuri is a prime example of this. She knew nothing about PrEP. She never talked to her healthcare provider about PrEP at all. And this deeply concerned me because one conversation, one decision, one Google search about PrEP, and Shuri could have prevented acquiring HIV through sexual transmission. Shuri's problem, Shuri's story highlights a very important problem, that the lack of information and awareness about your sexual health can lead to HIV. And this problem disproportionately affects the black community, but specifically a group of people who look just like me, black women. 
So let's look at some of the data to support this. The rates of new HIV diagnoses in black women are 14 times the rate than white women. And black women make up 57% of all new HIV diagnoses when only representing 13% of the population. And PrEP prescriptions, less than 1% of them go to black women. So not only are black women disproportionately contracting HIV, we are not utilizing the one drug that can be used to prevent HIV through sexual transmission. And I see this every day in my practice. And it is a huge weight to carry. So now that you know a little bit more about PrEP, what can we do to ensure that our community is utilizing PrEP? Well, to start, we have to normalize conversations surrounding sex and sexual health in the black community. Black people tend to dis discuss collard green recipes and pass down quilts from generation to generation, but we rarely have these structured conversations about our sex and sexual health, and this must change. We also need to know where we stand. And as there are several high-risk groups at risk of acquiring HIV, today I want to focus on black women. If you are a black woman and you are having sexual intercourse with an HIV-positive partner, or you are having sexual intercourse with multiple partners and are unclear of their HIV status, or use condoms but inconsistently, I want you to visit the following website, www.cdc.gov, and type in PrEP in the search bar as you are indicated for PrEP immediately. And I know some of you may be thinking, PrEP isn't for me. But what powerful information to pass along to your friends and family members and loved ones about this life-saving drug. I still speak with Shuri today, and let me tell you that she is a fighter. And although she contracted HIV through sexual transmission and was not indicated for PrEP, she still advocates for PrEP in our community. Both Shuri and my dad taught me that the wellness of our community is our collective responsibility. Black girls and women deserve better. And I join you to help me in the fight to end HIV in the black community. Thank you.